Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thirty years ago, Africans wanting to travel to the United States of America used to have to queue up in lines to apply for a visa. The lines were long, and the waiting sometimes lasted hours and even days, and in the melees that would predictably occur, some people got seriously injured. Today, 30 years later, Africans are still risking life and limb in order to make it to the West. In 2017, alone, over 100,000 Africans risked their lives to cross the dangerous Mediterranean sea crossing in order to make it to Europe. And in the process, over 2,000 of them perished. If Africa is a continent of so much potential, then why are Africans so desperate to leave this continent? Why is it that for so many Africans, the search for success means they have to leave? My name is Dr. Madupe Taylor Pierce, and I am a businessman, and I am also a scholar of leadership. Put simply, I study what it is that makes people successful. Show of hands, how many of you would like to be successful in the future? All right, everybody. Excellent. Okay, hands down. Now, how many of you believe that you are successful today? Show of hands. Okay, a few less. Some people look at their neighbors. So, success is nothing but the achievement of a predetermined goal. I have spent the better part of the last decade studying, researching, interviewing, meeting with hundreds of Africans from over 30 different countries in Africa of varying levels of success to understand what it is that they, the successful ones, have in common. Consistently, what I discovered is that, contrary to what some people think, the successful ones were not all of the same gender. They were not all of the same nationality. They were not all of the same tribe. They were not all of the same color. They were not all born into rich families. Neither were they all born into poor families. They were not all educated in the West. Neither were they all educated in Africa. I found out that there are three things, three characteristics that all of them have, and none of them, thankfully, had anything to do with demographic factors. They were all characteristics that stemmed from three choices that these successful people made. And what I'm going to do today is to share these choices with you. The first of the three choices that these people made was they chose to be vision-focused. A vision is a long-term goal. Every one of these successful people knew exactly where they were going long-term and they had written it down. In 1990, I joined the CFU Army, and I started basic training with a bunch of recruits, most of whom came from four backgrounds. One of them was a young man by the name of John Williams. Now, John loved to draw, and he loved to play the guitar. So any spare moment he would have, you'd see him with pencil and paper drawing. One time when we had a little bit of free time, and we were all sitting together, the recruits. John shared with us and said, told us that one day he was going to have a music studio and an art studio. I got to tell you, most of the recruits laughed at him. But you have to understand why. See, at that time, the cost of a music studio would run you thousands of dollars. It was so expensive, there were only two in the entire Sierra Leone. So for John to have that kind of a vision, 
given how poor we all were, seemed preposterous. But I noticed something about John when he spoke about that. There was a firmness in his eye that indicated that he wasn't kidding around. So I didn't laugh. Perhaps because of that, one time when he and I were talking one-on-one, -on -one, he shared with me that he was intent on getting it, and he even showed me drawings. He had drawn his studio, a large studio, on pencil and paper. Now, I lost touch with John a couple of months after basic training. This was 1990. And I didn't see him for another 15 years. 15 years later, I met up with John. And when I met up with John, you know what he showed me? He showed me his music studio and his art studio. John B. Williams knew exactly where he was going. See, if you want to be successful, write down your 10-year goals. Come up with 10-year goals and write them down. Why 10 years? Because first of all, 10 years is long enough for you to untether yourself from your current reality. Why write it down? Because of two reasons. Number one, your brain is fallible and it won't remember, you won't hold yourself accountable to it. But two, when you write it down, write it down, write the goal, write it on tablets, paper or electronic. It brings together forces, unseen and seen, that will actually conspire to help you get this is what successful people do. This is the first of the three choices that you must make. The second of the three choices that all successful people made was the choice to be a lifelong learner. Every one of them was intentional about acquiring a new piece of knowledge or skill that was relevant to their vision. My first leadership seminar that I facilitated or taught in Sierra Leone was conducted in 2007. One of the people who attended this seminar was a young-ish man by the name of Joe, Joseph. Joseph was an accountant. He had his ACCA. He came from a poor background. But already when you saw him at that time, it was obvious that he had achieved middle class status. He was a finance officer in a major company in Sierra Leone. And he had already achieved education status and financial status that was in excess of anything that his family had achieved. But what I noticed about Joseph was this. Every time I met him, he always had a book that he was reading. And also, any time that we spent time together, Joseph would pump me full of questions about business and about leadership. So at one point, I asked him, I said, Joe, you're an accountant. Why do you care so much about business and leadership? He said, would you pay? I am right now the finance officer, but this is not where I plan to stay. He said, I have a vision. I want to help the youth of Sierra Leone to be able to create new jobs for themselves, and I want to create new jobs for the youth of Sierra Leone to help them to transform themselves. Now at that time, 2007, bear in mind, Joseph knew a lot about accounting. He knew quite a bit about finance. He knew very little about media. And he knew almost nothing about IT. That was 11 years ago. Today, Joseph Abbas Bangura is the executive chairman of A Call to Business and the host of the Happy Play Show Life by Design. A Call to Business is a holding company which owns, amongst its holdings, an IT company, a media company, and a bank. How did Joe go from being finance officer of a tech telco to the executive chairman of one of the fastest growing companies in all of Sierra Leone? He made a choice. He made a choice to be a lifelong learner. He made a choice that he refused to buy into the notion or the myth that learning begins and ends in the classroom. Joseph refused to, to allow his brain to atrophy. 
He refused to believe that the attainment of his ACCA or bachelor's degree or master's degree or PhD meant the end of his learning journey. Joseph used every resource that he could find. He would watch TED Talks, he would look at Google, he would talk to people, he would ask people who knew more than him. And you know what the amazing thing about that was? None of those resources cost the money. None of them. See, he was intentional about being a lifelong learner. And that's how he made that transition. That's the second choice that you must make to be successful. Choose to be a lifelong learner. The third choice that I noticed that all Africans who were successful had made was the choice to be trustworthy. Now, trustworthiness is a mix of honesty and reliability. See, trust is a commodity that is quite rare. It's unfortunate. And the reason is because, unfortunately, many of our African countries, we do not have the systems and the procedures and the structures in place to hold people accountable when they're dishonest or when they're unreliable. So for many of us, we think that we can get away by, with being dishonest or unreliable. And you know what? We do. In the short term. We appear to get away with it in the short term. But in the long term, the reality is that we get found out. And the worst part is sometimes we get found out and the people don't tell us. And you see, the people who have access to money and treasures are not going to invest it in people who are not I don't recall the first time I met Yvonne Akisoya, but I do recall the first meaningful conversation I had with her. It must have been 10 years ago, and she was promoting a massive construction project called MAPE that quite frankly sounded a little too big to be achievable at the time. Now, despite my loop reception to her, Yvonne pursued this dream and Mape soon started with his first phase which was the construction of Sierra Leone's first ever five-star hotel, the Hilton. Now as Yvonne continued to work on this and as she delivered on promise after promise, I started to take notice and say, this woman is going places. But it turns out I wasn't the only one noticing that. Before long, NGOs, INGOs, and the government of Sierra Leone also noticed that Yvonne was trustworthy and would deliver on her promises, and they soon started to entrust her with projects of national significance. Three months ago, Yvonne Akisoya was voted the mayor of the city of Freetown. And already, in her first three months in office, she has already succeeded in getting people with access to resources to voluntarily offer those resources towards the accomplishment of her vision for free time. She chose to be trustworthy. See, success is three choices, folks. You choose to be vision focused, choose to be a lifelong learner, choose to be trustworthy. When you make these choices, money and influence will run after you. Oh, let me say that again. I think only three people got it. When you make these choices, these three choices, money and influence will chase you down. See, many of us who want to be successful, we think that we need money in order to be successful. We think money and influence are the ingredients or the antecedents of success. We've got it backwards. See, money and influence are not the ingredients of success. They're simply the byproducts. When you are 
competence by being a lifelong learner. When you are trustworthy, when you are focused, then the people with access to money and influence will be chasing you down. Success is three choices, folks. I'm encouraging you to make the choice. See, where you are today is as a result of choices you made previously. Where you're going to be tomorrow is based on the choices you make today. So I'm encouraging you, make the choices. Make the three choices. Choose to be vision focused. Choose to be a lifelong learner. Choose to be trustworthy. And if you want to know whether you have made that choice, let me give you a quick three question checklist. Question number one that you can ask yourself any day of your life from here on out. Number one, have I created and written down my 10 year goals? Have I created and written down my 10 year goals? That's question number one. Question number two. In the past seven days, have I acquired any new skill or knowledge that is relevant to my vision? In the past seven days, have I acquired any new skill or knowledge that is relevant to my vision? That's question number two. Question number three. Am I honest and reliable? Am I honest and reliable? See, if you can answer yes to all three of these questions, then I guarantee you, you will be successful. If you can answer yes any day of your life from here on out to all three of these questions, then I assure you that you are going to be successful. So that when I ask this question sometime later, how many of you are successful today, all of you will raise your hand. You see, the point is, if you, madam, if you over there, if you at the back, if you and you make the choice to be vision-focused, to be a life learner, to be trustworthy, if you all do that, then together we are going to create a movement. We're going to create a movement of success. We're going to create an army of successful people. We are going to create a continent of success. We're going to create a revolution of success. And we're going to transform this continent from a continent of potential, whose citizens are risking life and limb to find it elsewhere, to a continent of successful people, whose citizens that are born here can be raised here, can go to school here, can live here, can live full life and be successful right here. That's my invitation to you. I want you to join me. Join the movement. Join the success movement. And let's make this continent a better one for our grandchildren than the one that our grandmothers and grandfathers left for us. Thank you.